Hey guys, Veronica here. And today I wanna to talk to you about how I'm beating the heat in my garden, specifically when it comes to watering and protecting plants. So I had this crazy idea the other day and it wasn't really that crazy, but hear me out. Um, I think I had some delusions of grandeur when it came to keeping plants in the woods watered. And I kind of figured, well, if they get established with the spring rains and they're protected by the forest, then they're gonna be provided for. And that's totally not the case, especially in the first year of getting these perennial berries and herbs established. So I've had to figure out how to keep them watered for the last few months. And because not everything is as close to a hose as these peppers behind me, part of the problem that I'm dealing with is that I'm lugging buckets and watering cans all over the woods to water these other plants. And it kind of, either become something where you're spending so much time doing it that you don't have time to do anything else other than watering all your plants, which is, you know, part of the deal with farming, but also um, that you just have plants that start to kind of die off because really you're just kind of splashing that top part of the soil that's dry instead of getting the water down to the root zone. So I had to think about it and at the same time, there are lots of soda bottles and beer bottles they were hitting the trash here at the house because we don't have glass recycling in Texas. So every time I saw a bottle in the garbage, I'm just like, oh, that should be worth five cents or 10 cents or whatever it is, you know? Um, but it's not here, so they just hit the garbage. And I was having a lot of garbage guilt. So of course, you know, being the sort of person who's taking through the trash on a regular basis, decided to find a way to repurpose the glass we were throwing out. Well, it turns out, that it's actually a really good tool for watering. So today I just wanna show you a quick tip as far as how I'm going about doing this. It's super simple. And I think that there's lots of, you know, attachments and stuff that you can get usually for plastic bottles, which I don't recommend because heat and plastic and liquid don't really mix well. Um, but there's even attachments for like glass for wine bottles and beer bottles and whatnot. But they're not necessary. Like to be honest, they're really not necessary unless you're dealing with really fast draining potting soil, chances are that there's enough clay or enough density in your soil for this method to work without anything attached to the mouth, except for, you know, physics and gravity when it's inverted and creating that sort of like vacuum on the water that is in the bottle. So I'm gonna show you, you'll see there's a couple of peppers behind me. And this one, I put a new bottle on um, earlier this morning as you can see it's down about two inches now and so it was a little bit dry but you'll see that it's just down to the neck really is inverted into the soil and that bottle um, because this guy has been watered in the last day or so in this method it, this bottle will probably last another day or two the smaller bottles really last one to two days um, the wine bottles and larger bottles will last three to four days it so much depends on your soil type um, how hot it is, how recently it's been watered, <laughs> and how dry it is. Um, and, you know, so there's, there's factors, there's lots of factors there, but at least you can get started in this direction. And so what we're gonna do, as you can see, this other one right here has not gotten any water recently in the last day or so, and he's starting to look a little droopy. And so what we'll do is I have um, this I can't remember what it's called. It has a specific name, but it's this tool that I got from a um, American blacksmith company. I want to say they're in Missouri called Homestead Iron and oh, they call it the sharpshooter and it's really great for bulbs and stuff, but I found that it's perfect for this sort of stuff. And I mean, you can use a shovel or, you know, um, one of those weeding picks or whatever, like you could probably use a screwdriver <laughs> for like a flathead screwdriver. But what you want to do is you want to get into the soil and then just open it up just enough so that you can fit the neck of the bottle in. Now you could just shove the bottle in, like invert it and shove it in, but what I found is that when you do that, if you have clay in your soil, sometimes what happens is it'll compact in the neck and then the water doesn't flow out. And so I've been playing with this for like the last week or two now, and I found that if you dig a little hole for the neck to fit into, that's close to the root zone, but not like right at the base of the plant, you really wanna be a few I'd say like four to six inches away from the root zone and just dig a little hole so that the water can go straight to the roots and you can invert the bottle without clogging it up with soil. It's gonna get a little soil in there cause it's gonna get muddy and wet, but it's better than pouring it on the top of 
the surface of the soil and then having it run off everywhere. So we got a little hole right here and I'm going to, because this guy's so dry, it's going to get a wine bottle. And all I do, literally, all I'm going to do right here is just very quickly invert it. Oops, sorry, bud. And that's it. That's all you do is <laughs> just flip the bottle into the hole. This will very slowly start to seep out. Um, I may come in like poke and check at stuff every couple of days just to see like if there are empty bottles and um, if it looks like the water's flowing out or if somehow the neck is clogged up. It's not completely foolproof, but it does buy me more time and I'm not walking around with a watering can or a hose. I just have a crate of bottles that I refill and that delivers water directly to the roots of the plants. I've seen so much improvement in terms of just vigor and color uh, watering this way throughout the woods on these plants. And so I think even in just a small garden and backyard or pots, like if you have a handful of plants that you don't have irrigation for or you're using a watering can for, this might be a method to look into. Just keep it far enough away from your roots that you don't totally damage them digging the hole to put the bottle in and make sure that it stays fairly full. But you're not going to massively overwater with this method as long as um, you have you know, some texture to your soil and it's not you know, quickly draining potting soil. I haven't tested it with quickly draining potting soil and I haven't tested it with sand. And so um, feel free to leave me some feedback <laughs> if that doesn't work in those types. And there are like the plant nanny or plant nurse or whatever it's called, it's like the attachment for the bottles that might help those soil types out. But as far as you know, working with a lot of native soil types and a lot of the heavier types, like the clay loam that we have here, this is working really well. And so I just wanted to share that. Now, I also wanted to show you something I'm playing with. Um, we're gonna move to the orchard and then we'll talk about that a little, just so we can cover it you know, <laughs> with a visual. So let's head over there. And so now I'm in the front yard orchard and we have a handful of fruit trees that are just stationed around the front yard that are a couple of years old now. And I had been noticing some insect damage as well as potential pest and disease issue in general. Nothing that's too substantial, but I did want to get ahead of it. And so one of the things that came up when I was researching um, how to deal with just various problems is the use of kaolin clay. And kaolin clay is not a local product here by any means. It's generally shipped from China. And also, um, the variety that is for agricultural use, I'm not entirely sure of what the proprietary ingredients are in it that make up a percentage. It's like 5%, but um, I just wanted to see if there was something I could use that was more localized that um, could potentially do the same job, uh, more or less. So I had seen, this is what I love about Instagram, right? Is like I had seen somebody that's in the tropics that has access to a substantial amount of clay that was dealing with some wounds on a tree using their native clay um, from a local clay pit, essentially. And I'm like, oh, I have a local clay pit, so like maybe I can use that to kind of seal off and prevent issues on my trees. So this is totally an experiment. This is not a like, I've had a few people show up in the comments and they're like, you shouldn't talk about things that are not proven, but I think that's part of the joy of gardening, you guys, is sharing the experiments that we're working with and seeing, you know, how they progress as we go along, rather than just being like suddenly, oh, this works. It's like, well, let's test it out and see, and maybe someone has some feedback to give on it. So literally all I've done for this process, and I love it so much um, because it's, one, it's finger painting, but also because instead of spraying, a really fine mist three or four times, I can kind of just slather some onto the trunks. And so I'm using it right now in place of trunk paint. I totally understand that this is not going to be persistent. If it rains, a lot of this is going to wash off. But right now, when it's nice and hot and dry, when we're watering the trees at the base and not splashing water up on it, then it's going to act as a solid barrier against a lot of the insects that would otherwise be burrowing into the trunk to lay eggs or to chew up, you know, the underside of the bark or whatever they do. So I'm trying to create a protective barrier between the trunk and the inside of the tree that will hopefully prevent all of the tunneling and burrowing insects from getting in there. So we'll see how it works out. I hear that they don't like to eat clay and I don't blame them, 
But all I'm going to do is I'm just taking globs of it here, and then I'm just rubbing it down on the trunk. And that's basically it. It's just that simple. Um, I think that what happens is they go to dig into it, and then they get a mouthful of clay instead of a mouthful of delicious plants. And that's not what they're looking for, so they move on. But I also, because this is a white clay, um, and it's not the red clay, I'm also hoping that it'll help prevent sun scalds. I did notice there's been sun damage on these younger trees and I'm seeing splitting and cracking on the bark. So I'm hoping to kind of like patch that up and paste it together and prevent it where it hasn't happened. And I like it because it's a breathable material. A lot of times you'll see orchardists use diluted latex paint or maybe slacked lime that's rehydrated. Um, I just, I, you know, <laughs> you, you get to a point where you're bootstrapping it. You can't spend any money on, um, what is it, necessity is the mother of innovation, right? <laughs> so if you can't spend money on some supplies because other supplies are more important, they're harder to substitute, then it makes sense to try and use what you have. I don't think I'd use like a native soil that's straight soil, but this was coming from a pit that was nothing but clay, like no plant material, very little rocks. Um, it's the sort of clay that we've had people who work in the area that are in construction try and buy off of us. And we've said, no thanks, we're using it. So I'm hoping that I can get this down to, um, to figure out how to suspend it in water in a fine enough uh, particulate so that I could potentially spray it on foliage. Cause that's the nice thing about the kaolin clay is that you can use it to spray on the foliage of your plants and it'll help um, during the summer for them to not get a sunburn as well as if you're persistent about spraying it, then it'll also keep insects from nibbling on your leaves, supposedly. So I haven't tested that yet. Um, I'm going to dedicate a sprayer to it and see how long it takes me to clog the nozzle. But if you've worked with native clay or this sort of technique in your space and you have feedback for it, for me about it, please leave me a comment in the comments below. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those as well. I'll do my best to answer them. All of these things that I share are just things that I'm testing out. Some of them work, some of them I'm figuring out if they work or not, but don't be afraid to experiment and learn from, you know, your successes and failures and my successes and failures. Like that's what gardening's all about. It's not um, looking for any sort of silver bullet because everything is gonna vary based on your climate, your environment, um, your soil type, all of the other things. Like there's so many variables, you guys. So feel it out, play around, um, drop me some questions in the comments below. Say hi to Tot Tot. And if you like what you see, as always, hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at Flavor Kit for this sort of stuff and more on a daily basis. A lot of these things come from my Insta stories. So um, develop out into ideas and things to share from there based on the sort of feedback and questions I get. But yeah, check it out wherever you decide to join me and I hope that it's here and elsewhere. And until next time, happy gardening.